So how are new companies thinking about the way they're gonna infuse AI into products? And what's the tension between older legacy companies and the new startups nipping at their heels? Well, Nourish Hall joins me. He's the CEO of Alcyon, who focuses on data protection from Microsoft 365 on this bonus episode of The Business of Tech. Are you ready to spot opportunities by aligning IT with your clients' business strategies? Get in Sync equips MSPs and IT professionals with the tools, methods, and training to deeply understand client strategies, ensuring IT investments directly support key business objectives for tangible outcomes. With Get in Sync, you gain critical insights that empower decisive actions, enhancing your competitive offering. This solidifies your role as a trusted advisor and supports your clients' strategic needs, bringing greater success. Test your readiness to become a certified Get in Sync trusted business advisor with our free online assessment. Accept the challenge to discover if you have what it takes to become an indispensable strategic partner for your clients. Begin your journey with Get in Sync. Visit getinsync.ca/slash MSP Radio to learn more. Nourish, thanks for joining me today. I'm very excited to be here uh, talking to you, Dave. Thank you for having me. Me too, because you know one of the things I keep talking about on the show all the time is, is all of the various approaches that around AI and what we're seeing. And obviously, that's everyone's buzz. But mm-hmm. what I think is interesting is, is that there's lots of different approaches about making AI specific mm-hmm. to more, you know, our audience of IT services companies and MSPs and how we translate that into what users do. Tell me how you specifically think AI is important, is going to impact this space. Sure. So, you know, my vision about AI is in in particular for the channel for MSPs has always been the same over the last few years that we've been doing this. But, you know, when I rewind the clock a year ago, I think there was some concern in the channel, is AI going to replace us? Is AI going to impact our business, et cetera? I'm glad that's gone away. Um, to answer your question, I think AI is an amazing opportunity for the channel, the MSP, for the service provider out there, right? Because the way we look at it, the modern MSPs, what they're trying to say is, how do I replace my legacy tools with AI-enabled tools so that I can do a better job and focus on the things that I really care about, which is my end customers, right? My professional services, their digital transformation. Because AI, it is giving me new features, but it's taking away operational files from me. And so the way I look at our channel partners today were at the forefront of implementing AI. It is about how do I both deliver a better experience for the end user, elevate my position and reduce all my operational files, not to focus on those value-added things that I, right? And that is the consistent message we've been hearing over and over again. Now, you said something that I'm really curious about. So you talked about replacing legacy tools with new tools that are AI. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, if I were to take a parallel to the larger tech companies, right, those legacy players are the ones that are generally bringing AI to market. So for example, when we think AI, we're thinking for soft and Google and Amazon, who I would not say are you know old players. Yes. So there would be a solid argument for most providers to say, Instead, my, my existing toolkit is probably going to get an upgrade. And it sounds like you've got a different opinion. There. Tell me what your thinking is of that legacy versus new and, and the challenges. Sure. You know, I think, you know, drawing another analogy, AI in some sense today is like the gold rush, right? When I go look at Google, Microsoft, what they're doing with OpenAI, as an example, the creators of ChatGPT, those are the people that are providing the shops. Right. And the pickaxes to say, look, you're the tools, but are they readily, are these the things that will be directly consumed by the IT practitioner? No. Right. Sometimes the answer is, you know, maybe a little bit, right. I take care of a translation or some support requests. So pull things out of my knowledge base, but usually they're not directly implemented. Right. When we go look at any of our partners today. All of them have a stack of tools, right, for backup, for RMM, right, for security, as an example. And there's a lot of, quote-unquote, AI washing going on, where people will say, look, I do some statistics, it's AI. I do AI, but it's really the demo quality version of it. 
I think to wait for what we've done at Alcyon, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later, we said, starting from a blank slate, if we were to build this from the ground up, right, or there's a reason there's AI in our domain name and our company name, if we did this from the ground up, what would the experience be? What are the features that we can provide? And some of this stuff then becomes a cost issue, right? How can we provide cost effectively to people? And you can't do it by slap bolting AI on, right, to a legacy product. So I think the bigger companies are providing the basic tooling, the foundations, I would say. The house we construct to solve our channel partner problems is actually going to be very different. Right? So it's like building a house now versus building a house, a ranch, you know, 100 years from now, construction techniques have changed a lot. Right? Um, and that's the analogy I would draw here. That is, I would answer yes, but doing it Applying AI in a domain-specific manner is a lot more involved than saying, hey, you know, let, let's add an LLM to my product and be out. So make that a little specific for me in the world of backup, because, sure. you know, this, this is a certainly an arguable, very mature space, right? We yep. know how to generally backup data. Mm -hmm. What does AI bring to the table when you infuse it into backup technology? Okay. So, right, for your listeners, I do want to give some context, right, in terms of a little bit of my background history. I am very passionate about data protection, right? I did my PhD on the subject and beat through many companies, right, and many startups. The first startup where I led engineering got acquired by Dell EMC, right? Uh, company advice got acquired by Palmwall. Then the company I founded next got acquired by Wien. And on to my, you know, next company now at Alcyon, where Beam is actually one for larger investors. All right, they let us series A. And so I've been in data protection for a while. And, you know, I thought I was done with founding companies in the space, right, to be very blunt. And that's when we started running into what AI could do, how the climate has changed. And in particular, I think, right, we said, where is data loss going to come from? Right, it's no longer my disk drive failing, right? Yes, they fail, and we need against that. But it's really this whole cyber threat climate we live in. Malware, ransomware, right? Um, and we see every business, doesn't matter whether it's small or large, getting impacted. Right. Literally see that small five person companies, large, you know, 5,000 person companies, all impacts that. And the only real way to tackle those issues in data protection is using AI. And that's why we founded Alcine to do it, right? So hopefully that gives you a little bit more color. I can go into a lot more depth. But when we look at just how the landscape has changed in terms of tag vectors in terms of what people are out there doing in terms of movement to the cloud in a more collaborative way that companies are working. That's been somewhat of a very concerning um, confluence of events that led us to say, look, we need to go and we solve this data protection problem because the legacy way of doing it is not going to work anymore. So what does AI bring, though? Because I could, if I remove AI from everything you just said, it's still all internally coherent, right? Like, so, so what does AI bring that makes it different in this space? So let's see. There are, it brings two or three things, right? So it brings from the, let's talk about it first from the end customer perspective, right? What the end customers get a number of great features, including improved security. You can't do ransomware manually. Right, you get improved. Um, it's within that you have ransomware detection, malware detection, anomaly detection. Right, someone suddenly doing something strange, deleting files with it in, moving files out. Right, there's a lot of work that goes in there. Right, and for today, for example, we have multiple AI models that are continuously learning on every backup what novel behavior is. Right, and none of that will be possible in a legacy world with heuristical rules. But I think it is also more important for our partners what AI brings to for them to the table. They are getting a material reduction in operational toil. Right? We've had so many, and this is heartwarming to me, we've had so many partners come up and thank us and say, look, you are literally saving hours off my week that I used to be doing internal break fix on my backup system. Why? Because on our side, what shows up as ease of use to them is AI because we do better scheduling. We rate in a thousand person company, you can never set up a manual schedule per person, right? To back up when they're the most active and when they modify the most data. 
our system can do it for our customers, right? You don't need to worry about scheduling anymore. You don't need to worry about reliability. We figured out when the best time to do it is, when to retry something, how to auto-remediate some issues, right? So from an ease of use and operational file perspective, so what suddenly goes away, that again, you focus on the thing that really bring value to the business and not the things you need to break fix internally. Right? And I think those are the two big things. When we talk about ease of use, when we talk about reduction in pain, when we talk about customer benefit, that is the consistent message we have received from all our part. Now, how do you think about the balance of ease of use versus the ability to provide insight into what's happening? Because oftentimes, when you're, do, you're making changes to make things easier to do, you're removing mm -hmm. some of the controls or some of the exposure to it. That can be a good thing, but there's a balance to be struck there. How do you think about that balance? So I think it is not an either or is what we realize, right? So I think it is uh, what do you present at the top level? How do you go down? And how do you not overburden someone with complexity to begin with for day-to-day -day jobs? So. And so I think there's different degrees of complexity. But then now this is going to sound like I have a hammer and I see a nail and I'm going to use the AI hammer in every nail. But this is actually true, right? Some of the things that we are internally be looking at is how do you give that control back when you need it? Using tool. Because you, right, sometimes I think complexity in legacy products is arrived because there was use case X, there was use case Y, right? Use case X only applied to 5% of users, but they really needed it. And people threw everything in, including the kitchen sink. What we have figured out is uh, some, some of these things, when we go look at how we use chat GPT, which is, you know, you know, talk to mine data, or talk to scrape data as an example, I'm oversimplifying. We're seeing more newer use cases that we can apply even for API, which is chat with my API or chat with my data. So the type of use cases you talked about can be readily serviced by, you can just say, hey, right, what is happening here? Can you give me more insights there? And we have seen how systems like ChatGPT with a few minor additions can go talk to our APIs and over time go talk to our data. All these insights up. So you don't have to build for the entire universe and oh, you know, burden a legacy system, burden a system with um, complexity. You can have it be a little bit more freewheeling, which is usually what customers want because most of these use cases are very one-off. A customer request comes into a part and they say, how do I figure this out? So, now your, your statements there implied some of where my next question is going, and I want to get a little bit more of your thinking of it, because you, when you talk about allowing ChatGPT to call into APIs and such, it means you've given some thought to the way leaders can optimize their relationships to add value to data. Give me a, give me a sense of your philosophy around it. Sure. Right. So first of all, you know, I think this is, might, might not be what you were thinking about. The first thing that comes up to us is privacy and security, actually. Right. All of these features are great, but if I am leaking data accidentally across customers, or I have an LLM that exposes data, right? None of those things are great for anyone and us, the partner, the customer, right? So we actually, our vision is we start up with the foundation of security, we start up with the foundation of privacy. So when we train our model, all the models are customer specific and nothing's ever shared as an example, right? Then what is the next step up? Then there is, what do we do? Use those models for internally to provide features that just come out of the box. They didn't get things. The next level up is when you think about, hey, what do you do from an API programmatic map? Right? So for example, today we have a customer dashboard in the system. We have a partner dashboard in the system. Well, what if there's a new use case, right? It's all under the both customer and partner dashboard. It's the same APIs. So then how do you expose a programmatic interface that allows AI-related tools to interact with APIs? And then finally, and we don't have this yet, is looking at just how do you talk to your data? How can you pull out more insight from that? We already have businesses have said, Neeraj, back up all my critical data. And those are the things you can get insights. And how do you then go build that out is what we're looking at, uh, is one of the things we're looking to do next. Yeah, isn't there a lot of some work required by the provider and the MSP to get data in some kind of readier state? Uh, most organizations are pretty sloppy when it comes to data. Isn't there a, a process required? Tell me about what's required to make that use. Sure. So I think there are two ways of looking at it. There is a dedicated business case that one might have to say, look, this is 
critical to my business, right? And I'm going to build out some custom tools. I have a full pipeline. I'm going to clean the data, ingest it, right? And feed it into whatever system I'm building using the tools provided by some of the big cloud providers you mentioned earlier, right? What we're saying is, look, even before business case exists, what can one do here, right? Because there is still, in some cases, the it's an 80-20 kind of rule where you'll get 80% of the benefits with maybe 20% of the work done here. And we've already done the heavy lifting of pulling data into our system. So how do we then go and re-expose it and become the other uh, thing what can do there? And then once you at least get some insights, you can then figure out, is it worth the investment for me to do something more full or blow? Right? So we're not saying Alcine is the end-all, be all of things. All right? But we're saying it is that one critical building block that you've entrusted already your critical data to, and we can already do intelligent things with that. Right, let's focus on the data protection side. We'll be doing more. And so this becomes another, again, value-add feature for our partners, for our end customers, for their end customers, sorry. Well, I think that's the area where there's value for providers. So, yeah. Garth Tolia is the CEO of Alcyon, focused on the security challenge of data protection for Microsoft 365. He's a former Veeam and Dell EMC exec. He's grown the organization, have customers in 15 countries, over six continents, and just launched their MSP program. Ross, thanks for joining me today. Dave, thank you so much for having me. Are you and your clients tired of the time-consuming ticket tennis of coordinating meetings and help desk calls, wouldn't it be better to automate this process with a tool that connects directly to ConnectWise Manage or Autotask? TimeZest offers scheduling automation that gives you complete control of your schedule and eliminates the hassle of calendar ping pong. As the only service designed specifically for MSPs, it integrates into your workflow and makes scheduling appointments easy on you and your clients. Plus, you can try TimeZest for free. Visit timezest.com slash MSB Radio and use the code MSB Radio to get 10% off your first year of TimeZest. The Business of Tech is written and produced by me, Dave Sobel, under ethics guidelines posted at businessof.tech. If you like the content, please make sure to hit that like button and follow or subscribe. It's free and easy and the best way to support the show and help us grow. You can also check out our Patreon where you can join the Business of Tech community at patreon.com slash MSP radio or buy our Why Do We Care merch at businessof.tech. Finally, if you're interested in advertising on the show, visit mspradio.com slash engage. Once again, thanks for listening to me, and I will talk to you again on our next episode of The Business of Tech. Part of the MSP Radio Network.